Good evening, Forever Family. So glad that you're back with us tonight for night four of Hope Within the Storm. It's my prayer that you've been blessed by the messages that Juiza has been bringing to you each night. Tonight, you're in for a special treat. In a moment, Juiza is going to share with us a message about the end times. And then, immediately following that, we're going to jump into a live Q&A session with myself, Pastor James, and the rest of our student pastors and Pastor Juiza as well. So we invite you to stick around for that. So now, enjoy the message, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes to start our live Q&A. Are you ready? Are you ready for the moments in the movies when everything hits a low point? The moment when everything is going so great and then suddenly it all goes wrong. And you know it's coming because it happens in like every movie. But even though you know about it, you're never really prepared because knowing something doesn't mean you re you're ready for it. The people who followed Jesus, the disciples, and even the ones against him, the Pharisees, knew about the Savior that was going to come and save the earth. And yet he wasn't what they expected. So they either wanted him to be something different or they denied him completely. Today, we also know about something that's coming soon. And evidently, it's the same person. <laughs> but I don't think we're prepared for what all that entails. I was recently listening to a friend talk about the current crisis going on. And while we were, t while we were talking, they said something that surprised me a little. They said, I never thought I would go through something like this in my lifetime. And the reason I was surprised is because I knew I would be going through something like this. I was told from a very young age that I would be going through something like this. Revelation 16, 18 through 21. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake it no earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. No tr so tremendous was the quake, the great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell on people. And they cursed God on account of the plague of hail, because the plague was so terrible. And this is just some of the things that was mentioned in this chapter. The Bible has so many other warnings for us. It warns us of what's to come before the everlasting kingdom. It warns us so that we can be prepared. We have this knowledge so we can arm ourselves with God. And yet, we don't take advantage of it. Not everyone has it. We were giving this blessing, and yet we sit on our phones and our computers, and we read our books, and we talk about politics. We do anything to distract ourselves. Because we're not ready. This is hope, hope of what's to come after. This is the beacon saying, Jesus is coming again. The end times are coming, whether in this lifetime or the next. So are you ready? So let's pray. Dear Jesus God, we know of what's to come. We know that what we're going through right now is hard and that we weren't fully prepared for it. It may not be the end times, but we're still having a hard time. We ask that you please watch over us 
and protect us and come into our hearts because we know that you're coming again. But even though we know, it's still hard. We love you and we just ask you to be there for us while we're suffering, while we're distracting ourselves. And I just ask that you help us get prepared for your coming. We love you, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, good evening, everybody. Super glad that you are joining us tonight for Hope Within the Storm, our live Q&A session. You just heard a message from Pastor Juiza about the end times, and we're going to jump into our Q&A. Uh, I'm joined here by Pastor James, Pastor Raul, Pastor Semu, and Pastor Juiza. So um, I just said everybody's name. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself a little bit more, tell everybody where you're from. Uh, maybe some of you might be graduating here in a couple of weeks. I don't know. Raul? Oh, I come from, originally from Cuba, but I live in... Um, California now, but I go to school here in Texas. I go to Saul and I'll be graduating from business, uh, well, theology and business uh, this year. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Uh, my name is Semo, uh, originally from Hawaii. And uh, so Mr. Beach is out there, but uh, the lakes are, are great out here as well. <laughs> but uh, senior theology major, uh, graduating and uh, finishing up uh, these next, uh, within the next week uh, here at Saul. Uh, uh, but great to be a part of the uh, Forever family and the Keen staff as part of my uh, student internship. Um, my name is Juisa. Um, I am from Puerto Rico originally, but I live here in Keen. Um, I am also a Theo major, but I'm also taking psychology and will be graduating next year, not in a few weeks. <laughs> but um, yeah, so intern at Keen Church, and really excited to be here. Awesome. We're super glad to have all of you here, and welcome to all of our viewers right now. It looks like we have about 15 people watching on YouTube, and apologies right at the last minute as we, we're going to start this. Facebook would not accept our stream for some reason, having some troubles with Facebook. So we're here on YouTube, and we're designing this to be a question and answer. So if any of you have uh, any type of uh, questions uh, that you'd like to have, go ahead and put it over in the chat box on the right side of the YouTube page. I'll be monitoring that and kind of injecting those into our conversation tonight. So any questions uh, uh, concerning this series, Hope Within the Storm, uh, tonight's particular message is about the end times, and we're going to unpack that a little bit more. But if you've also had any questions, if you've been watching this week, uh, what uh, Pastor Juiza has been sharing with us throughout this week, uh, we'd invite you to, in, uh, to put your questions in there. So to start off this evening and someone, you know, just jump in, we'll take a stab at it. Juiza, you finished your message tonight with the question, are you ready? And I want to springboard that question into our discussion by asking, what does it mean to be ready for the end times? So basically when I was pretty much writing that, I was just thinking of how when I sit down and I do my Bible study, I, I don't really get into it like I should, despite being an intern pastor. And if I, as an intern pastor, aren't really getting into Bible study, I'm wondering how the rest of the world is faring, especially during these times right now with what we're going through. Um, it's, it's hard. And like I said in the little sermon sermonette thing, um, I lost my train of thought, but basically, <laughs> um, basically it's just, I don't think we are ready to deal with this kind of thing. Just like my friend said, she didn't think they didn't think they would go through something like this in their lifetime. And a lot of people think that too. It, this is something like surprising to them. And like I also mentioned, it wasn't as surprising to me, but it's still hard to go through. I mean, we have people struggling, people dying, and 
this may not even be the start of the end times. I mean, again, it may be in another lifetime, but I just, I don't think we're ready for, I don't think we have enough of God in our hearts to be prepared to go through hard times for him. So I'm not sure how, if I worded that correctly, but you know what? I tried. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, that was good. Thank you for uh, your honesty, Juiza. Semu, I think I cut you off. Jump in on that. No, no, no. I was just going to chime in real quick. Um, I think part of the uh, answering the question, are you ready as well, is um, it depends on the destination too, you know, um, uh, meaning that uh, like for school, if um, if you're truly ready and uh, if you meet the requirements, uh, that meaning your assignments are done, uh, you, you're there on time, and, and uh, or if, you're, if the, the destination is a restaurant, the requirements is you got, you, you got to have money, you got to have appetite, you, gotta be, you know, you're ready to go. So I think it, it depends on the destination as well. Mm. Mm. Okay. You know, um, you she oh, said that a James. lot of people uh, that uh, weren't, ha haven't gone through anything like this, weren't expecting to go through anything like this. I think one of the complacencies is that we are really – privileged and I, I just noticed offhand that I, I have my flag over there. Um, we're really privileged to live in a country that has delivered on peace and prosperity for most of us. And uh, uh, lifetimes, entire generations have gone by in which there has not been a draft into a war that we had no choice about, that there has not been a significant depression that the, let's just call it the privileged uh, elite have, uh, have suffered from because we've had jobs, you know, there are a lot of people who didn't have jobs, but most of us did through 2008 and through 2000. Um, my mother lives two streets over and she lived through the Great Depression. She lived through World War II and she lived through Korea and Vietnam that all were, uh, wars that you didn't have a choice whether to go to so some of the not expecting to go through anything hard is frankly a description of the generation that y'all are in um uh, i registered for the draft right after they stopped drafting people Yay! <laughs> and uh and so I, I didn't have that uh that fear of my number coming up but beyond that we, as, as, as Jesus said, we know that stuff's going to happen that's going to be bad unto death. And so this is just a, a little suggestion of it. And except for those people who have gotten the disease or lost their jobs and really fell on hard times, most of us are going to weather this pretty well. Um, most, for most of us, it's a, it's a weird inconvenience. But when we get through it, we're going to be happy, and, and hopefully people will start spending again. The economy will rebound. The fact is that this is a small one compared to what Juiza is saying is coming when you see a hailstone of 100 pounds. <laughs> yeah, I uh, noticed a couple weeks ago a friend of mine on uh, Twitter, a uh, pastor up in New England by the name of Sean Brace, um, he posted and said, all of a sudden, all of the end time scenarios that seemed far off and seemed like something that would be generations from now, all of a sudden, all of those scenarios seem like they could be playing out. Uh, and it's very scary being in the country where it's the, the land of the free living in the United States. And now all of a sudden we're balancing um, our rights versus the public good and how we navigate through all of that. And I think it's very, very important for uh, us as pastors and for everybody else uh, in the world who's living during these times to be uh, digging deep into the word and to see what the Bible has to say about how we approach these times and about how we can have hope within the storm. Mm. You know, following on, on what you're saying, Pastor, I like, uh, some, sometimes I, I like to think that um, sometimes we will never be ready for whatever whatever is coming, you know. But like mm -hmm. we have to decide on what what side are we gonna stand on. Like we gotta be committed, whatever we decide. So it's kind of like we will never be ready. But like 
I'm committed to God and I'm going to decide to stand by his side. So like whatever happens, um, I'm not even going to worry about, about whatever is coming my way because like, sometimes we even talk in my family, we say, um, imagine how would it feel to live without having a faith, without having a God, without believing in somebody that can rescue you. How is that? Like that's, that's a terrible life. And what makes a difference between a believer and a non-believer is that we all go through the same things, believers and non-believers. We all go through the same thing. The only difference is that how we approach those situations and what we believe. We, we, uh, I'm, we are, we, Seventh-day Adventists, we as Christians are going through the same pandemic that the whole world is going through right now. But now the only right. difference is that we have a faith. And we know that at the end of this whole chaos that is happening, all these things are going on in this world, God's name will be glorified. So that's, that's the only thing that gives me comfort. You know, we're all going through the same thing. But I got, a, I got, I'm a believer of God. And I know that at the end of this whole thing, God's name will be glorified. Hmm. You know, it's interesting. Uh, what Samu said was that, uh, anyway, it, it made me think of a thing we used to do um, when we get a client in, in, a, in a criminal case that was not guilty. And, uh, and we used to have a saying that says, you can beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. And so here we are, you got to decide what you're prepared to beat. Are you prepared to beat the coronavirus? Are you prepared to beat the depression? Are you prepared to beat the persecution? Are you prepared to beat hailstones? Or are you prepared to beat eternal death? You can beat the rat, but you can't beat the ride. We're going to be stuck going through this with everybody else if we survive. We're going to be stuck going through it with everybody else, but we know what the real victory is and it's a wholly different thing are you ready for that victory mm -hmm. and that's the one jesus was saying maybe we're not maybe we ought to think more about that victory and, and less about whether or not there's toilet paper <laughs> well i think that that leads us in uh lillian actually uh submitted a question here uh, and that question specifically is do you think we can of our own actions go from getting ready to being ready so do you think we can, of our own actions, go from getting ready to being ready? Honestly, personally, I think there are levels to getting ready, but I don't think it ever really reaches being ready just because the journey to getting to know God and being with God and having him in your heart is like, it's a daily struggle. It's not something that you can get to a certain point and you're done. So if you want to be ready, you just have to continue doing it. And maybe eventually you'll reach that point personally in your life. But as for me, I think that my own journey is just going to be a constant journey of getting ready because we're never going to fully know or fully understand who God is in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I personally would love to keep getting ready, um, not just get to the point of being ready because i don't feel like that's fulfilling i don't know <laughs> it makes me think of uh, i don't know if you guys have read uh, c.s lewis's chronicles of narnia books uh the last battle how the last battle finishes it's the last book in the series um reef achieved the mouse and everybody is back together they're riding into the city and they get into the city and they see in the middle of the city there's a hill and there's a city on top of that hill and reef keep reef achieved keeps shouting further up further in and they ride up that hill to this, that city they get inside the city uh, the, the gates of that city and then they find out there's a hill inside of that city and there's a city on top of that hill and it goes over and over and over again and reaper chief keeps saying further up further in further up further in uh and i think that plays into exactly what you're saying juiza that uh there's not maybe necessarily a state that we reach perfection um to use those terms there's a state that we reach like i am ready i am here lord come take me now to live for eternity no Eternity doesn't make sense unless there's a progression and we constantly grow and we continue to come to know God in better ways. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, the, the other side of that coin, and it's one that maybe we as Adventists have, have failed on, is the, uh, is the assurance. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say, keep getting ready, keep getting ready, keep getting ready. He said, be ready. 
And uh, he said, there's going to be trouble. You're, you can't beat the ride. There will be trouble. But be ready. And the readiness, uh, you know, the, the, of the 12 virgins or whatever it is, 10 virgins, half of them were ready. Right? And so we can be ready. And the readiness is not readiness of our own activities or behaviors or perfection. Uh, readiness is, is being on the right bus. I, I think um, I think that we personally can't do anything to be ready. It's God who decides that we're ready. So anything we do, it's not really our decision whether we're ready or not. It's up to God, up to his judgment. So, yeah, no, I, I agree with uh, Pastor Weingartner on that. Samu, I think you were going to jump in on something. I don't know. I was just going to say um, uh, real quick, um, if it makes sense, I think uh, to be ready is to be in the process of getting ready. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> you're, just, you're dropping the mic tonight, man. No, no. <laughs> Stop the stream now. We're good to go. <laughs> it just came to mind. So I was like, I better get it out there before, before I forget. <laughs> well, well, why don't you give us that exegesis of the word mature in the New Testament? That'd be, that'd be the answer to it, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. I wish I could. <laughs> He hasn't graduated yet, so okay. yeah. we give him a week and a half break. Okay, two weeks. He'll be ready. This conversation does remind me, though, it takes me to scripture in the book of Habakkuk. Um, I have been uh, reading, I love the book of Habakkuk. I think it's very appreciated for our times um, because Habakkuk stands up on uh, the walls of Jerusalem. And he says in Habakkuk chapter one, verse two, how long, O Lord, will I call for help and you will not hear? I cry out to you violence that you do not save. Why do you make me see iniquity and cause me to look on wickedness? Destruction and violence is all around me. And he kind of goes on this long rant towards God. Like, why is all this happening? Why is coronavirus happening? Why are there no, why is there no toilet paper in HEB? Uh, why can I not go see my family? Why do I have to wear a mask? Like all this kind of stuff. And God actually responds to him in verse five and says, look among the nations, observe, be astonished, wonder, because I'm doing something in your days you would not believe if you were told. And then God goes on to expound that he's going to be using the Chaldeans, an enemy of the Israel, of the Israelites, to bring about something for their good. It's going to look like bad at the beginning, but then ultimately going to turn around and be something for their good. Um, and that stirs Habakkuk up a little bit. In verse 2, he responds to God and says, I will stand on my guard post, station myself on the rampart. I'll keep watch to see what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I'm reproved. So he says, I'm going to wait for God. When he replies to me, I'm going to have a reply, and I'm going to go in this. And then God says, wait, back, hold on. The vision is not yet for the appointed time. It hastens towards the goal, and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay. Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by his faith. And I like the translation that says the righteous will live by trusting. Yeah. And that's kind of a more uh, in-process word. Yeah. Well, and that's what uh, Paul will pick up on that in Romans chapter 1, verse 7, um, and say exactly that. The, the righteous will live by faith. And so if we can identify the fact that we're trusting, we can count on our readiness hmm. what do y'all think i think you need to uh, uh run that back again uh pastor james again <laughs> if we're living in a state of trusting can we count on our readiness uh, interesting question um I think uh, to count on, on 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 our own efforts, our own strength. Um, I, I don't think we, we can count on that because it fails us at times. But we do know that the hope is that God never fails. So I think if our trusting uh, is in God automatically, uh, by His nature uh, that's working within us, or His Spirit that's working within us, uh, we are able to trust not in ourselves but in Him. I don't know if that answers the question or not. I. I think as long as we do the work, as long as we put in the effort, we can definitely trust that we can be ready because, you know, we can trust in God 24-7. The 
issue is us allowing ourselves to let him live in us and let that trust guide us. Sounded weird, but I think it was okay. <laughs> I think that our, read, uh, our readiness should be based on, on, on God. You know, whatever we do should be based on God. And, and um, I was, I was preaching, I was preaching uh, uh, last, last week on Vespers for, for Swahu. And uh, we were going, I, I went through, you know, all the generations of the Israelites and how um, all the things that they went through. And uh, uh, it's crazy how we got, we got, I preach about, I preach about the first and second and third generation. And it's crazy how, you know, the first generation was, was the generation that left Israel and they were slaves and they went through a lot of things, the 10 plagues, you know, everything. Um, but they got to experience God in a mighty way. Um, it, I, I'm not saying they were perfect. They made a lot of mistakes and sometimes they didn't trust God. But like they saw God in a mighty way. And the second generation was a generation that actually made it to Cana. You know, the generation that uh, it was not Moses' generation. It was Joshua. It wasn't as strong as Moses, but, uh, but uh, they believed in the God of their parents. And then we saw the third generation, uh, who was the generation that were, were, was asking themselves, who is God? And the Bible says, in, in, in the Bible says that they said that at that time, uh, in Exodus, the Bible says, Exodus 25, uh, 20, 20, 21, 20, uh, chapter 21, verse 25, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, the Bible says, uh, there was no king in Israel, uh, and they uh, would do whatever, whatever was right in his own eyes. And I'm like, I don't know if this is something that happens to the third generations, because if it is, uh, I feel like we need to trust more in God. Because uh, we're living in times where people do whatever is right in their own eyes. So uh, I feel like when it comes to trust, I feel like we need to make sure that we trust the same way the, the first and second generation did. Even though they made a lot of mistakes, they were like, anyway, whatever happens, we'll trust God. But like in uh, living in a generation that do whatever is right in their own eyes, that means that that generation is not trusting God. So, so I feel like when it comes to trust, when it comes to trust and, you know, trusting God, we got to make sure that not, we, we don't need to go back. I don't, I never, I don't think that we need to go back, but we need to learn from the things that our people, the people that came before us, like Pastor, Pastor James was saying that, you know, his mom uh, lived the, uh, the depression and that generation saw God in a mighty way because they went through that. And now, you know, they, they saw how God, uh, got got them through that through that, and you know they lived uh, beautiful times as well. I feel like everything is gonna pass. Everything is gonna pass, but we gotta make sure that we learn from that generation that God carried them through, and He's gonna do the same thing one more time with us. Yeah, yeah I really like that. I really like that. And I think that leads us to um, kind of an application question. Um, as we uh, kind of turn the corner, we don't want to take up everybody's evening and just kind of filibuster this till midnight, right? Uh, but the question then is, how does the situation, uh, COVID-19, thinking about the end times, kind of end of the world situation um, or scenarios, how does the, this situation that we're currently in adjust how I, how we, how you love, connect, and share with those around you. So that's our, our tagline for, for Keen Church, love, connect, share. What does it mean in the midst of COVID? How does it adjust how we love, connect, and share with everybody around us? That's a great question. Um, as far as the connecting part, I think um, although we are practicing social distancing as a uh, community uh, uh, worldwide and uh, in, in our own nation as well, I think it's very important that as far as connecting, um, we need, in our social distancing, we still need to connect spiritually. Uh, that is uh, most important. And of course, connecting with those around us. And um, unfortunately, uh, we have, uh, you know, we can't uh, see them face to face or we can't uh, be in with them in person, but uh, connecting with our neighbors, uh, with our family and friends like here on Zoom or through FaceTime and through technology that, uh, that uh, we have been blessed with to uh, do ministry. And uh, so I think it's just the uh, new normals. New normal is what they call it, right? 
So I think uh, there's going to be uh, new, new, th new uh, methods, uh, although we still stand on the principles, but there's new methods that we can do ministry through. I think I remember when I, when I went to Israel um, last summer, um, I got into a classroom and there was a big sign in the classroom. And that was the first thing I saw as soon as I walked in. And the sign said, if, you're gonna, if you want to go fast, walk alone. If you wanna if you wanna go fast, walk alone. But if you wanna go far, walk together. And uh, I was like, this is so deep because some people um, wanna make it fast in life. They wanna get to the places they wanna get fast, but they don't realize that if we wanna go far, which is something totally different, then we need each other. That's that's why you know if people feel like they don't they don't wanna get into um, YouTube or Facebook to listen to another sermon, but they don't realize that they need to listen to a sermon. And at the same time, the pastor that is preaching need to preach that sermon because we're helping each other out. I, I, one of the things I realized as soon as I, I, as I was a freshman at the, at the Audrey Major here as well, uh, I realized that giving Bible studies did not, all, did not only help the person that I was giving the Bible study to, but it was actually helping myself. And, and I was like, this is something deep because at the end, I'll be the one feeling blessed. I was like, I feel blessed now. And, and I was the one giving the Bible study. So it's interesting how when we help other people, we also getting a lot of benefits from it. And I feel like that's the way God is trying to help us. That's the same. I, that's, I think that's the reason why God says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because when you love somebody, you know, with that love thing, I feel like, that's you you become the the one blessed and the one getting a lot of benefits from helping somebody else um for me i think this whole situation has kind of made people appreciate other people more um i was on facebook the other day and like literally the whole explore page was about memes of people hugging people once they get out of um, the whole social distancing, out of the whole quarantine. And like, it was just a bunch of like, hugging, uh, touching, um, going to someone's house. And like, when, like before this whole thing, I remember me trying to avoid hugs and avoid going to people's houses and avoid interaction. But through this whole thing, it's actually made me want to do it more, <laughs> which is weird, especially coming from me as someone who likes distance um but yeah no it's not just me though it's it's everyone they want to interact more face to face now that um this thing has been into been implemented um and even if they're not like talking to each other face to face they're still trying to find ways to connect especially all the extroverts um but yeah no it's just we appreciate our time together, I think, a little more uh, because of this whole situation. That's true. And going off of what Jesus said, um, you know, uh, that's, one, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to, uh, too, is getting back into the regular church service. It's just uh, greeting the people, hugging the people. And, uh, you know, as a Polynesian, uh, we're all about hugs and uh, handshakes and, you know, all that there. So it's kind of hard to uh, walking around and, uh, you know, not being able to check it Shake anybody's hand or <laughs> well, that's me too. No, but like, you know, going going on what you were saying is it's interesting how this time has helped us to realize the value of family. Because um last last uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was one or two weeks ago, um uh my dad sent a link, a Zoom link to our family group chat. And then we were able to talk to all our family. And that hasn't happened in a while, I think in years since we left the uh, home, you know, since we left Cuba. And now it's kind of like, let's, let's get together, you know, let's talk, even though I know it is through um, social media. Well, it is through Zoom, you know, but like it was, it was beautiful to be able to talk to our family and see how they're doing. So like, even though I know this pandemic is, um, uh, it's uh, something that none of us wanted to, wants to live right now, um, but he has given us the opportunity to help each other out. 
you know, and help uh, and appreciate the value of family. And because uh, in reality, we don't know when it's going to be the next time that we, we're going to see each other. Nobody knows, you know? So it helps us appreciate family. And, and, and yeah, I, I guess we got to count on each other. Yeah. Like what you were going to say, that? No? Do no. you have something? No, I, I just thought that uh, any unusual situation – like you easily said, is going to uh, push us to respond to that situation. And so mm -hmm. I think uh, for uh, people who are introverts, uh, this, uh, this thing has been uh, a good way to test the limits of your introvertness. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so we'll see, we'll see if, if maybe, uh, if maybe you, you develop a little bit of a, a, another thing. And the other is that, I think what uh, Rose said is interesting because I'll bet you there are a lot of families that may not even have had family chat experiences ever until this, and it's kind of developing that link and that uh, that connection uh, across long distances because we are gifted with the miracle of this internet thing that we're using right now. And, uh, and for those of you who are in y'all's generation, you don't even remember this, but in my generation, when I went off to college, I went from San Antonio to Dallas and, uh, it cost a dime a minute roughly to call home. And, uh, it was a voice only line, copper wires. You had to sit at the desk. You didn't have video back then. It's amazing. You know, what's interesting is that, that they talked about it. They dreamed about it. They envisioned it. But they, they just, they said, there is no way we can carry that much data over two copper wires. And, and that was their big limitation for all those years. We cannot carry video across two copper wires. How are we going to do it? And so they tried to figure out ways to link a whole bunch of copper wires. And, and so only big companies and offices that had a whole bunch of telephone lines could piggyback all those telephone lines together and have something assembly. And it was terrible. And, 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 and then, and it, and it was so very, very expensive. Uh, anything more than 20 or 40 miles from your house was a long distance. and It was terrible. And now uh, just at the right time for this pandemic, uh, even uh, our most senior citizens, uh, my mom can use all these devices. She has a little tablet that she picks up and, and, and it's a beautiful thing to know that we can still love, connect and share without actually sharing germs. <laughs> That's the important part, right? <laughs> so I do want to give another opportunity. Any of you that are watching on the YouTube live stream right now, if you've got any questions, Go ahead and head and pop those up in the chat. We'd love to, to answer those. Thankful for the one question that did come in. Um, as we kind of bring this to a little bit of close, barring any any questions that, that further come in, um, Juiza, what can we expect from your message tomorrow night? What's the what's the landing point without giving away too many spoilers and saying people are like, ah, I don't have to watch tomorrow night because you told us everything that it is. Uh, what's the cliffhanger um, that brings us back tomorrow night for your final message? So today's message was actually kind of a cliffhanger. Um, I'm not sure if viewers noticed, but I kind of changed it a little from the other sermons. Um, I didn't have my usual introduction. It kind of just went into things. So I wanted that one to be a cliffhanger because the last one is, it, it pretty much encompasses all of the other ones together and it gives you the final message, the final hope. Um, I mean, the title of it is Another Hope, which mm -hmm. is to conclude the final hope that I'm wanting to bring to everyone. Um, but yeah, so hopefully expect good things and um, you should watch it because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we thank you, everybody that uh, has been liking and sharing those messages. It's helped get the get the views up. I think we're at uh, probably about 250 views on each of the videos so far. And it'd be great if by the end of the week on the whole series, um, we could get that video to a thousand. You think you guys think we can get it to a thousand? Can I do? Can I do? I think we can. So if you guys uh, 
after we finish tonight, wouldn't mind those of you that are watching it, go and like and share that. I'm not seeing any questions pop up on the YouTube chat, and that's okay. We're not going to belabor this any longer. Um, does anybody have any final uh, last words as we conclude our discussion tonight as we've gone from um, how can we go from what does it mean to be ready and then moving towards the practical application of um, adjusting our loving and connecting and sharing in the midst of this. What's the, what's the final word? If I would say something, I'll, it would be uh, stay strong. We need to stay strong, you know? Even in the midst of the storm, like what is it, the palm trees that can withstand all the wind because they, they flap around on this and those things still yeah. stand straight until they get knocked over, but stand strong, right? Stay strong. <laughs> <laughs> Stay Amen. strong in the Lord. Amen. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. No, something like that will be brought up in tomorrow's thing. And I just remembered now. So, yeah, I'm kind of excited about Because this last one is actually my favorite one, even though it's actually the shortest one. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited uh, for those of you who are watching. And I just want to thank everyone, um, the Keen Church, for letting me do this at all. Um, and just all those who are watching, commenting, sharing, thank you for allowing me to do this and watching because I didn't think as many people, I didn't think the people who did watch would watch. Yeah, I think I, meh. I didn't think as many people would watch as the people who, whatever. Okay. Number of watches has exceeded your expectations. Yes. So when you said a thousand, I was just like, no way that's possible. But if we, we can get it to there, then that would be a blessing. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to call on, on everybody's help that's watching. We have 20 people watching right now. If each of you share it on your Facebook feed, um, you've probably got at least a hundred friends. So 20 times a hundred, what is that, uh, Pastor James, 2000? <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> 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 then we get to 2000 right there. So thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in uh, this evening to this live stream. We're going to sign off for now. Uh, and um, as we do that, uh, I'm going to ask um, Semu, would you mind uh, finishing us up with a word of prayer this evening? Sure, let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity just to um, gather together, Lord, on Zoom. But I pray, Father God, that uh, your Holy Spirit will zoom into our hearts, into the homes of those who are watching. And uh, we just pray, Father, that you may continue, Lord, to bless each one, Lord, in a mighty and special way. I thank you, Lord, for this time just to discuss and to um, talk about, Father God, being ready. And Lord, we uh, look forward, Father God, to the day when you come again, when there'll be no more sickness, no more sadness, no more death, nothing but joy and happiness. And we look forward, Father God, to your soon coming. But in the meantime, Father God, we ask, oh Lord, uh, that we may remember, Father God, that. Uh, like in your word, Lord, everyone who went through circumstances, Father God, the key thing that was a present, Father God, was you. You are always present. So you are still present. You're still in control. You're still on the throne. So, Father God, help us, Lord, to put our total trust and faith in you. Continue, Lord, to bless you, Weeza. She continues her series, and she finishes tomorrow. I pray, Father God, that you may speak through her, Lord, in a mighty and special way. But bless us now forevermore. This I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again. We'll see everybody tomorrow night at 7. Amen. Bye.